In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You had to be there. Most good stories end with that line. You just had to be there. Maybe it's the story of a fishing trip and the one that got away. Maybe it's a legendary adventure with friends or a family vacation. We all admit that the stories are never quite the same thing as being there, live and in person. Now normally this is not too big of a problem. We listen to someone's story, we appreciate it, we might even enjoy it, but part of us is thinking, that does sound fun, but I really didn't need to be there. However, given that you're all sitting in church, and it is Sunday morning, I think you can all come up with at least one story for which you really do wish you had been there. The life, death, and resurrection of Christ would be a good choice. For after all, you were not in that little town of Bethlehem. And you were not there when they crucified my Lord. And you were not there when the risen Lord greeted his disciples. You weren't there. Instead, you are here. Now, being here instead of there would leave us on the wrong side of history and the wrong side of eternity if we did not have a reliable witness with us now. Praise be to God, here this morning we have the Holy Spirit and the inspired, inerrant testimony of the witnesses who were there. St. John makes it very clear in the Revelation, in his first epistle, and at the end of his Gospel. He witnessed it all. His testimony is true. It is for this reason that Jesus Christ appointed apostles from his company of disciples. And this is why he sent his Holy Spirit to remind them of everything. So that we who were not there could, nevertheless, know and believe all that has been done for us. This is what we mean when we confess in the Nicene Creed that we believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We are confessing that our faith and our church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus being the very cornerstone. As John explains in the opening to the Revelation, Jesus Christ revealed this message to John through his angel, and John has borne witness not to his own words or ideas, but to the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. So the revelation did not drop from the sky and into a published book. It was given to the beloved disciple of Jesus, who was there with him during his earthly ministry. John makes it even more abundantly clear in the beginning of his first epistle. It is almost annoying how much John repeats over and over that what he is saying is from what he and his fellow apostles had heard, had seen, had looked upon, had touched. Rest assured, John is not repeating this over and over and over in order to boast about how lucky he was to be there. He emphasizes the real, human, earthly witnessing of the word of life so that you may have confidence in their testimony, in their apostolic message. For what they are proclaiming to you is true, and it is for you. As St. John says at the end of his gospel, if they were to retell everything that they had heard and seen in the ministry of Jesus, then all the world could not contain the books. Yet, what the Holy Spirit has called to remembrance in the minds of his apostles and in their writings, that much is for you, and it is enough. These things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. You just had to be there. But since you were not, Jesus Christ sent his chosen apostles to bring this very word of God to your ears and into your hearts, 
so that even though you were not there, the Holy Spirit who was may create faith in your heart to trust in this Christ, the Son of God. Indeed, this is the sole reason that our Lord sent his apostles into the world, so that all people, even you, may hear and believe their testimony. St. John says in his epistle, that which we, the apostles, have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. Indeed, this is what it means to believe in and be a part of the one holy Christian and apostolic church. The apostles are in fellowship with the Father and the Son. There is no denying it. So the Church of the Apostles is the one church that is truly in fellowship with Christ. And these apostles could not and did not keep this fellowship to themselves. What they proclaim, they proclaim so that you may join them. What they write, they write so that you may have fellowship with the same God as they have. John even says that this will make their joy complete. They have fellowship with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but even in that fellowship, their joy is not complete without you. Faith in their testimony joins you to them and to God. You were not there. You had to be there. But now you are with them as you trust their testimony of what Christ has done for you. And so we see that the apostolic church is the church of God's word. The apostles did not write down their personal memoirs. The books of the New Testament are not private diaries that got published by mistake. You won't find St. John's grocery list in any of the passages. These words of St. John and the other apostolic writers are words from God to you, so that although you were not there, he may be here with you. Now because the apostolic church is the church of the word, she has little time or tolerance for other false claims of authority. Our little local traditions may be good and fun, but they should not become idols or blasphemous replacements for the divine word given through the apostles. So be very, very, very careful when you say, the church has always, or the church has never. The one holy Christian and apostolic church has been around long before our blessed German ancestors planted congregations here, there, and all over the map. And these absolute statements of traditions, styles, preferences, anything else, they are by nature schismatic and divisive. If we only spent as much time and effort ensuring that we were holding sacred the divinely inspired and apostolic word as we spend bickering about things that scripture says nothing about. For I think we can all agree, none of us knows the apostolic word as well as we ought to. And that's a call for repentance and a return to God's word. For in the end, the apostolic word will be far better for your souls no traditions, no preferences, no emotions or feelings or religious experiences here and now can offer you what the apostles do in their testimony. They offer the very word of God for life and salvation. The other matters that the church busies herself with rarely offer us anything other than frustration, division, or maybe a temporary and misleading feeling of security and accomplishment. Only the apostolic church offers you the sure, certain, and eternal word of God. And only in this apostolic church do we receive the cleansing of sin that we truly need. For the apostolic church is also the church of Holy Communion. St. John says that what they are writing and proclaiming in God's word is given so that we might have fellowship with the apostles and with our triune God. The Greek word there for fellowship is the same word for communion. So what message is it that John proclaims? 
What word is it that creates this fellowship, this communion with God and his church? It is the word of law and gospel. This is the message that John heard and proclaims to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have communion with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice truth. That is plain and clear, simple and easy. In God, there is no sin, no darkness. To say that you are in communion with God while walking, living, and acting in sin is a lie. Repent. If your life serves darkness, you cannot claim fellowship with the light. Now, do not be deceived or misled again. St. John is not saying that you have to perfect yourself before you can be in fellowship and communion with God and His Church. Walking in the light does not mean that you will make for yourself a perfect, sinless life, a light shining from within your dark soul. Walking in the light is to admit to your sin. Repent of it before God. Trust in His mercy that His gracious light does shine upon contrite hearts. John adds, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have communion with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. John proclaims to you in these words that those who walk in the light are the very ones who need cleansing of sin. They are not perfect saints who have cleansed themselves. This cleansing comes to you in the very body and blood of Jesus that was crucified and raised to life again. Now where does this blood of Jesus cleanse you, if not in the very sacrament of his body and blood? You were not there at the cross where his blood was spilled. But he is here for you in the sacrament. Jesus entrusted this sacrament to his apostles gathered together on the night in which he was betrayed. And they have recorded the sacrament's institution so that you too may believe that Jesus Christ comes to you under the bread and wine with his own body and blood for the forgiveness of all your sins. Now because we come to this table as people in need of cleansing, <coughs> as people who have broken God's law. We come with repentance and with faith in His mercy. For this reason, the apostolic church is also the church of confession and absolution. You heard in our confession and absolution this morning the very words from 1 John 1. And then in our lesson, you heard the apostle's gentle plea and his comforting message. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. So when the one holy Christian and apostolic church gathers together for worship, we gather in repentance. Simply forgive us and cleanse us. We hear the testimony of the apostles, the very word of God that forgives our sins. And we have communion with our God and with his apostolic church. You just had to be there, back in Bethlehem, Jerusalem, and Galilee. Since you weren't, your Lord comes to you here and now. He brings assurance, comfort, and consolation through his apostolic word. He brings forgiveness, life, and salvation in his sacraments. And as the Church of the Apostles devoted themselves to these things in Acts chapter 2, let us be likewise devoted to hearing God's Word and receiving His gifts. For in these gifts, He is here. So there is nowhere you would rather be. Amen. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.